I would like to thank the organizers first to put up this very wonderful workshop. So I can, I'm going to talk about uh, my recent work on the um, vec bosonic vector model uh, with quenched random mass disorder in the larger limit. So the work is in uh, this paper on archive. Okay. So the topic is uh, general about the disorder. We know that disorder exists everywhere in our life. On one hand, it exists in the real material. So such as the lattice distortion or some impurities uh, re replaced atoms in the periodic array. And on the other hand, experiments are always done in an imperfect situation. For example, um, there, there can be random external field or due to some uh, uh, external disturbance, the system are actually in a random potential, something like that. Um, sometimes disorder would provide some uh, frustrating noise, but this is not always true. Sometimes it's very interesting disorder can give rise to new universal behavior, uh, which can be more robust, even more robust than what we can have in the clean system. So there are uh, many interesting consequences due to the disorder effect. A lot of people uh, devote themselves into this area for decades. So there are really many names. Uh, if I miss anyone, I'm, I would say sorry for it. Um, so the famous example is the so-called spin glass which avoid the agoticity due to the random uh, exchange coupling between spins. And also for, uh, if we have a fermionic system, the, fermionic, uh, the, the fermions would have random chemical potential, then it will make uh, the free fermion become a localized fermion. This is the famous Anderson localization. Also disorder surprisingly can help us to measure the quantized uh, transport in such as the integer quantum pole effect. And there are many other uh, interesting phases due, induced by the disorder effect, such as both glass, mott glass, and also diffusive metal and so on. So today I'm gonna focus on bosonic system. Um, they, so for the, to see how the disorder affect the interacting boson gas, basically. So in the clean system, we know for the interacting uh, boson gas, there can be two possible phases, superfluid and mod insulator, depending on uh, what the value of the microscopic parameter is or the effect or the coupling of the effective field theory is. And these two phases can be separated by a direct continuous phase transition. Below three dimension, uh, three spatial dimensions, the transition is in the O2 Wilson Fisher universality class. Above it, the transition is just described by, by the uh, free Gaussian theory. 30 years ago, Fisher and co authors, they study uh, what happened if the bosons have random chemical potential. So they found that there, uh, there opens a intermediate phase between the model insulator and the superfluid phase. So the intermediate phase is the so-called false glass phase. It's a glassy phase. Um, and for this, they further study the property of such a uh, phase, avoid a gauticity. And following their work, there are, one can ask many other questions. For example, what's the effect of other type of disorder? So for example, we can put the bosons on the lattice and they can have random popping or even random on-site interaction. Then are those disorder also in, in, induce an intermediate glassy phase or not? Regarding the phase transition, we can also ask many questions, say, uh, what's the nature of the phase transition? How, it's, uh, uh, how it is different from the, uh, direct transition between superfluid and mod insulator. And uh, um, uh, what, what, what's, the phase, what's the phase transition look like at exactly half filling here or away from half filling, what's the, uh, uh, fit, how the phase transition would uh, behavior. So there are a lot of questions one can ask. Some of them were uh, answered, some of them are not. 
Regarding the phase transition, in general, so far, it is still lack of understanding um, about the nature of, of this phase transition, especially above uh, two spatial dimensions. So here I'm gonna give this problem a try. So I use the renormalization group uh, method to try to study the effective theory of superfluid modeling through the phase transition perturbed by weak disorder. So particularly I consider the quenched random uh, mass disorder. Mm. So instead of one complex boson or two component real boson, I consider generalized N component boson because this makes the uh, problem feasible. And for this particular clean critical theory, I perturb it by the weak disorder, uh, the, which is quant quantified by the disorder strength W square, and then use the RG method to see how the uh, perturbation leads to the, uh, um, how the RG flow look like induced by this weak disorder. Okay, as we know, um, so it, yeah, if, if you feel any uh, confusion, you can interrupt me anywhere. Um, so the clean effective theory we know can be either Wilson-Fisher or Gaussian, depending on the space dimension. When the uh, below three spatial dimensions, we know the theory is, uh, should be describing the Wilson Fisher fixed point. And it, we can study it by uh, studying from this UV action. So the UV action has the kinetic term of the bosons. So the phi is the N component boson. Here I omit the ON index. And also it can it be perturbed by the quartic interaction. So below three dimensions, this quartic interaction is uh, relevant. So this UV action can finally uh, approach to the IR Wilson Fisher fixed point. Or directly we can just write down the IR action for the Wilson Fisher uh, fixed point. So the, it, um, it, it can be done by simply doing the Hubble Stratonovich transformation. So here we decouple this uh, quartic interaction term and introduce another Hubble field, the sigma. So in the larger limit, actually, so the phi and the sigma are the scaling operator of the uh, Wilson Fisher CFT. And the sigma is the sing own singlet and phi is the own vector. And, by, uh, and here we are left with the sigma squared term. So below three dimensions, this is irrelevant and we can uh, ignore it. Um, so the first two terms, is uh, describe the IR Wilson Fisher fixed point. So we're gonna use this uh, theory later for the, dis for the disorder problem. And above three dimension, we know the quartic term is irrelevant. So the, theor the system is described by just uh, the Gaussian free theory. Okay, then we want to perturb the these two theories by weak uh, random mass disorder. Now we want to assign a random coupling to the singlet operator of both uh, CFTs. And in the Wilson Fisher uh, fixed point, the singlet operator is sigma. In the Gaussian theory, the singlet operator is phi square. And notice random coupling is only a function of uh, space coordinate because it's a quenched disorder. It, um, it has the Gaussian distribution characterized by the by its width w square also the w square is the so called disorder strength because um, when the w square goes to very small we can see the uh, gaussian distribution approaches to the delta function in the w square goes to zero limit this means uh, picked at zero so this means all the random coupling has only zero value meaning our uh, theory goes back to the clean limit. And uh, if the W square is very large, so this means uh, the distribution is very broad. So there are uh, there is uh, much randomness in this, uh, in the theory. So we need to take 
the uh, we need to consider the disorder effect seriously. So that's the strong disorder effect. Our goal is to study how these two perturbations, how these perturbations um, induce the RG flow from the clean fixed point. In order to answer such a question, we usually take two steps. So the first step we would like to know when is the weak disorder relevant, especially at the larger limit. And secondly, we want to know what's the IR fate of the theory of the system when the disorder is relevant. So the first question is easy to answer um, by the, by the so-called uh, famous Harris criterion. So the original uh, criterion says that the whether the weak disorder is relevant depend on the critical exponent, one of the critical exponent of the clean safety. So here the exponent is new. And if it satisfies the condition that two over new is larger than space dimension D, then the disorder is relevant. And for whom not very familiar with critical exponent, I write down here um, that the critical exponent is actually a function of space dimension D and also the scaling dimension of the lowest singlet operator, delta. So this is uh, their relation. So the Harris criterion actually says, um, says about when the uh, dimension of disorder strength is positive. So here we can do a simple counting, power counting. If we start from a clean CFT denoted by S0, then we want to perturb it by uh, uh, quench the disorder, which coupled to its scaling operator O with scaling dimension delta. Then we can find the random coupling J acquires a, a dimension D plus one minus delta. And then since the disorder has the Gaussian distribution, then it's easy to find the dimension of W square is D plus two minus two delta. Two situations in the Harris criterion actually corresponds to whether the dimension of W square is positive or negative. When it's positive, then the disorder is relevant. When it's negative, then the disorder is irrelevant. So this, is, this can be understood because let's look at this, this case when the dimension is positive. So this means under RG, our disorder distribution gets broader and broader, meaning that uh, more randomness is introduced to the system. So uh, in the IR, the disorder can get very uh, strong, uh, can strongly affect the original theory. So the disorder is relevant. On the contrary, when the uh, dimension is negative, this means under our cost graining, the distribution gets thinner and thinner, which finally goes to the delta function in the IR limit. This means we go back to our Kling's theory and uh, the disorder, dies, disorder effect dies out um, if we look at the system in a larger landscape. So, this is uh, how we um, tell when the dis weak disorder is relevant or not. And then we can apply this criterion to our own Wilson Fisher and Gaussian fixed point separately. Below three dimension, we can see the Owen Wilson Fisher has the lowest singlet operator uh, with scaling dimension equal to two in the infinite n limit. So we yeah, it's more easy to do power counting in the infinite end limit. And then correspondingly, the um, critical exponent nu is equal to one over D minus one. So this tells us the mass disorder is relevant um, above two spatial dimensions. On the other hand, the, at the Gaussian fixed point, because it's free, so the lowest, um, singlet operator has scaling dimension d minus one. This corresponds to the critical exponent nu equal to one half. 
And uh, this leads to the disorder is relevant uh, below four spatial dimensions. So in total, the disorder is mass disorder is relevant between two and uh, four spatial dimensions. <laughs> so this analysis um, divide this axis of spatial dimension into three parts. So below two dimensions, we know the disorder is irrelevant and our system would go back to the clean limit in the larger length scale. So it's still described by the Owen Wilson fissure. Above four dimensions, uh, the system will go back to free Gaussian theory. Of course, we need some upper limit and the lower upper bound and the lower bound of the dimensions. Um, but here, we are more interested in what happened uh, in the uh, between two and four dimensions. So in the infinite n limit, we are actually able to find the exact results of the system, meaning we can compute exact um, disorder average correlation functions. And then we can analyze uh, the behavior of the system. So besides the infinite n limit, we are also interested in finite but large n case because they are more physical. Um, so what we can do is from the inf infinite n limit uh, result at two and four spatial dimension, we do a double expansion of epsilon and one over n to find the behavior at two plus epsilon and also four minus epsilon dimen spatial dimensions. So basically we want to find out the behavior at these four question marks. So I want to describe those four question marks one by one. Firstly, let's look at what happened here uh, at infinite n, uh, but between two and uh, three dimensions. Um, okay, let's look into this case. So as we know, n is uh, in the infinite n limit, the theory can be very simple. The clean theory now has only two, uh, two scaling operators. So the theory um, is of two generalized free fields. So they are two scaling operators. One is Owen back to phi, and the other one is Owen singlet sigma. Only the Owen singlet couples to the disorder. So um, this means the, the sector of uh, five of the five field is intact uh, in the presence of disorder. So we are able to integrate over the phi to get the effective action in terms of sigma. Can I ask you a comment in the, in the clean limit at finite n? Are you, are you going to talk about how good this? Because I, I can see that you know n gives a very large mass to sigma. Uh, it yeah. Looks like in here. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. if it's large, then you know sigma is sort of static, but standard so, different, qualitatively different. You mean like if the infinite n limit and finite n are qualitatively uh, different? Yeah, that's right. Does the infinite n limit you know, give you a big description of the actual world submission? Exactly. The, the, actually, the two descriptions are quite different in the infinite n limit and the finite n. Okay. Yes. So you come to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we cannot do uh, like simple one over n expansion. We need to do the epsilon and one over n expansion, the double expansion. So in the uh, two dimensional system, they are kind of similar. Like we can do the expansion to approach the finite end limit, but above uh, two spatial dimensions, we cannot do it. Right. Okay. So here we get the effective action for in the, in the infinite end limit. So the first, uh, the first term is the usual um, kinetic term of the sigma field. G sigma is the propagator of the sigma field. So different from the free field, it's a generalized free field, meaning that the propagator of it has a non-trivial power, which depends on the space dimension D. And also uh, being a generalized free field, it has uh, zero higher point functions. 
And then uh, the coupling between the sigma and uh, the random, the, the, the disorder, the mass disorder is the same. And we, in the momentum space, we can see the coupling only exists in the zero frequency sector. Yes, so this is our effective theory. And since this theory is quadratic, we can compute any correlation function we want. So here I list uh, three of them. Uh, in principle, we can do any of them. Um, so let me uh, explain them one by one. So the firstly, we can of course get the disorder averaged two point function of sigma itself. We can see the result is the same as what we can get in the clean uh, system. So this means the two, two point function of sigma field is not affect, totally not affect by the disorder at all. But the composite operator of sigma uh, do affect, uh, are affected by the disorder. So they have quite different behavior, which lead to some non-trivial things later. So for example, the sigma square, uh, it has two, the, the correlation function has two terms. The first term is contributed by the clean system. The second term is obviously the disorder effect because it's proportional to W square. And we can see it's a three point function. The disorder average the three point function also has this feature. It contains several terms. Part of them is from the clean system. Part of them is proportional to the disorder strength, which, is, which means they coming from the dis, disorder effect. And so other correlation function has a sim similar feature, um, but we can, we notice every term has a power law behavior. So we, we are curious about if the system still have the scale invariance, how does the scale invariance look like due to this uh, disorder uh, corrections? So um, since we want to ask question about the scale invariance, we, we the better to do the scale transformation on those uh, correlation functions. As what we do in the normal uh, phases, the space and time gets rescaled by the same factor, say e to the L. So, and um, yeah. So you're not including d equal to in this analysis because you said that d is greater than two. So what about d equal to two? So d equal to two also satisfy. So for the, the an analysis uh, in this part, so basically, the, to describe what happened in the red question mark. So in this part, I use the general D, but we can plug in any D equal to two plus epsilon F for any epsilon, they work. Can I, so to yeah. calculate these, is it just diagrammatics and then you just sort of or? Uh, no, actually, because the action is quadratic. So we can directly compute the co correlation function as a function of disorder. Uh, the random coupling and then do the disorder average. So there are finite terms uh, in, the, uh, in the correlation function. And then we can do the disorder average for each terms. So these, these results are exact. Right, right. Disorder is Gaussian and uh, yeah, it's just our Gaussian integral. Yeah. And then, um, so, uh, and then we want to um, see if those operators are scaling operators. So how, how do they uh, transform on the scale transformation? So for the uh, fundamental field, the sigma, it just uh, transform in the usual way with the scaling dimension equal to the clean scaling dimension too. So we can see this uh, correlation function because it's the same as what we get in the clean case. So it's um, finite and the scale invariant. But things are different for composite operators. For sigma square, we can see if we want to keep the two point function finite, we need to uh, rescale the, the field sigma square in this way. So this means the scaling dimension, if, if sigma square is a well-defined uh, scaling operator, the scaling dimension was assigned to it 
is no longer the clean case, clean scaling dimension four. It acquires an anomalous dimension d minus two over two. If d is greater than two, then the anomalous dimension is non-zero. So, mm, and this will keep the two-point function finite. And the, in the large, uh, in the long scale limit, it's, it has scale invariance because other information dies away. So what, key, what will remain in the uh, long scale limit, the scaling limit is the second term, which is proportional to W squared. So the first term from the clean case, uh, clean system dies away. And also for higher point functions, all of them dies away in the scaling limit. So using the same criterion that makes the two point function finite and scale invariant in the scaling limit, we can determine how the other composite operator transform. So all of them acquire a anomalous, non-zero anomalous dimension and, and all of them has vanishing higher point uh, functions. So in this way, we can realize the scale invariant somehow in the dirty system. So the, the, scale, the theory in the scaling limit is obvious different from what, what we have in the clean limit. So here I compare them in, the, in this table. In the clean limit, we have the uh, fundamental operator sigma and their composite operators. So the scaling dimension of the composite operators are multiples of the scaling dimension of sigma. So this is a theory of a generalized free field and its composites. But differently in the dirty theory, we can see each composite operator gain a anomalous, different anomalous dimension, meaning they are now different type of operators. And since they have vanishing higher point functions, so each of them is a generalized free field. So, yeah. oh, actually, so, oh, yeah, we, we can just play with those, uh, this scale transformation a little bit, like we can assign the, uh, the how the space and time transforms, but none of them can perfectly satisfy the scale, uh, finite correlation function and uh, scale invariance in the scale limit two conditions. None of them can. So because we need the, uh, the fundamental operator has the same form as the clean limit. So the best choice is to keep the space time uh, rotational invariant. There's a thing with the other work and B and uh, R. Goldman. Right. Like, so I think they, they also did a large impact like, in two dimensions. So like, yeah. And then they found that order one of the vendors with fractions. Yes, it's that's. The leading order. It's the leading order. Here you're just. Yeah, this is an equal, an infinite okay. order. Yes. When when we include one of the incorrections, then the Z can get correct. Yes. When an infinite is perfect, it's equal to one. Yeah. But otherwise, there is no symmetry in this form. Yeah. So, if I understand correctly, this is you know perturbative and infinite with respect to W, or is it exact? Exact. For infinite and limit, it's exact. Okay. So yes. Okay. So we're not even not even perturbative. Yeah. So in this way, uh, we realize the scale, uh, scaling, a uh, scale invariant. We get the dirty uh, theory, which is in, which has infinite number of generalized free field, but none of them has composites. So it is, a, although it is a theory has scale invariant in D plus one uh, space time dimensions. So in this way, we realize, we somehow realize a scale invariant theory in the scaling limit. But you may ask, so if we like include all the informations we have in the, correlation functions, because as we do the scale transformation, something lose, like something dies away. Yeah. So in order to, uh, have a yeah. Quick question. So you said the three point function of sigma squared and higher powers is zero, but the four point function 
Are you saying that's also zero because wouldn't that result from factorization and connected correlation function? Okay, so that yeah. that's killed, and then you're yes, yes, yes. So I here are all the results of connected correlation functions. Yes. So in order to um to be more complete, not losing some information in the way go to the IR, so we can do another scale transformation to make all of those um, correlation functions finite and the scale invariant. So this need to modify the scale transformation a little bit. So as before, the space time are rescaled by the same factor e to the L. And then we just assign the, all the uh, operators sigma to the nth uh, to transform in this way. So using the clean scale scaling dimension two times n. So with these transformations, we extra, we in addition require the disorder strength to have a non-trivial scale transformation, uh, especially when the dimension is above two. So this makes our uh, correlation functions scale invariant and uh, finite. But this only realizes the scale invariance in two plus one uh, these space time dimensions. So this is actually a signature of dimension reduction. Um, we have a total dimension d plus one mm -hmm. system, but now we only realize the scale invariance in subdimensional system. Then we can uh, use another uh, alternative picture to mm -hmm. understand this dimension reduction. So, and then we can see the two picture matches to matches each other. So the alternative picture is the main point of it, of it is to write down the effective action uh, here. So let me explain more. For any operators, if we want to compute its disordered averaged mean, usually what we do is to compute its mean first at particular disorder realization and then do the disorder average. But now we want to do alternative order. We want to integrate over the disorder first and then do the uh, calculation it's mean. So by doing the disorder average, we get the effective action. So um, since our action is quadratic, so we can do this exactly. Uh, from our action, the quadratic action, we can write down the effective action in terms of bosonic field eta phi and the fermionic field psi bar psi. So they are all generalized free fields with, non, uh, with propagator acquiring non-trivial power depend on space time as uh, space dimension. And here there's uh, another quadratic term of this bosonic uh, field eta, and whose coupling is the disorder strength. The, this term only appear at zero frequency. Um, this means the disorder only affects the zero frequency mode, and we can integrate over other uh, mode, um, which are purely generalized free fields. So we actually have seen this action before last week, last Thursday in Slava's talk. So let me compare this action and his action. So he has, uh, he start with a free field and couple the free field to a classical random uh, field, J. And J has uh, the Gaussian distribution as well. And then he can write down the effective action um, in terms of bosonic field, eta phi and fermionic field uh, side by side. And also he has this quadratic term. And what, uh, so there are two differences between our uh, effective action. So the one thing is here, we I, I have generalized free fields. So my um, dispersion or propagator has non-trivial power rather than his. So I have the non-trivial power D minus three over two, when D is equal to four, the uh, propagator becomes free. 
And the other thing is my disorder only coupled to the zero frequency uh, mode, but he's uh, coupled to all the modes because he, he doesn't distinguish space and time. So this is the difference. And uh, in his talk, remember uh, he used, uh, he write down those, um, he write down a super field as a superposition of those bosonic fields, fermionic field and the fermionic coordinates. And then the effective action gets rather simple. And uh, it shows there is an emergent FUSI and uh, also dimension reduction from the total dimension D to D minus two. So this is his result. So here in my action, the similar thing would happen just as, so we can understood a generalized free field in certain dimension um, to be a free field in another dimension. So by doing this counting, we can find our dimension reduction is from D plus one to exactly three. So this is, um, this is uh, how we get the, uh, the, the alternative picture for the, this dimension reduction. So when D is equal to two, we can see there's no dimension reduction. And uh, the, um, the, this means the whole system stays scale invariant, but above two spatial dimensions, the, there is an extra dimension besides the scale invariant part of the system. And remember, we just assign it as an intrinsic scale set by the disorder strength. So these two pictures somehow match to each other and to tell us um, there can be another description for the uh, disordered Wilson Fisher at infinite and limit. So when you say dimensional reduction, can you like, does that literally mean I, you know, I can map this onto uh, you know, some kind of theory in three dimensions, but with some like internal degrees of freedom, or or is it more that the scaling dimension of the field map onto those as a critical component? So when I say dimension reduction, so here my case is a bit tricky because my generalized free fields are actually some somehow non-local, but in his case, uh, like everything works fine. So here I just give a schematic picture. But for his case, so we can think layers of system mm -hmm. and it lives in a three-dimensional system, mm -hmm. but the, it's uh, like the theory of it can be a two-dimensional one. So there is one scale which can be, uh, which always exists as intrinsic scale as we do the scale transformation. So this, this axis always uh, like, uh, the coordinate on the axis always change during the scale transformation. But, but the scale transformation that you wrote down doesn't have a preferred, it was just um, a, a right. scale of all dimensional states. Uh, yes, so. I mean, it's, it's a tropic. The fixed points you find, say, in three dimensions, like three spatial. Yeah. Is isotropic. Yes, and yes. There's no preferred. Yes, there's no preferred direction in my case. Yes. So it's a little bit hard to imagine. Yeah. Not, not doesn't like the layers of system. Yeah. But so uh, I just want to make sure. Like, 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 so, so, so in that context, what, what, does, what does dimensional reduction mean exactly? Uh, so it's like, so it's like his case. In his case, is, there is also isotropic uh, fields, right? There's no uh, like, like you cannot distinguish two dimension from the total D dimension, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, in his case also happened. Um, but so this is more like algebraic uh, observation. Like if you have, uh, so for a D dimensional system, you have some fields, but that's, that field is, um, uh, has, has scaling dimension as the free field in D minus one. Uh, D minus two, yeah, system. Yeah, that's kind of. Okay, so to say that like, if we look at the scaling dimension of the field, then in your case, they always look like. Yeah, look, sort of 3D. Yeah, look like that. 
CFT is scaling dimension. Okay. Yes, yeah. Yes. But ignoring the physics on a two dimensional cut of your system, you can describe the whole physics. Like, is the system holographic in that sense where just knowing what happens on the two dimensional surface, mm -hmm. you can reconstruct dependence on the other coordinates? Uh, you mean for 2D only? No, 3D. Okay. So 3D. Uh, you have this one extra dimension. So when you say dimensional reduction, it usually means that you can describe the physics of the 3D system, yes. pretty specialty, using only correlation functions. Yes, exactly. Surface. Yes. But then it's a holographic theory in some sense. In some sense, yes. Like if you integrate over the other direction, yeah. then it behaves well defined as CFT, something like that. Yes. So if, if, um, um, so I don't know how much time I have. Um, okay. So, so for, yeah, maybe we can uh, talk about offline later. Yeah. For more things. And so, so, so far, um, I've got two descriptions for this disordered Wilson Fisher at infinite and limit between two and three spatial dimensions. So the first one is simpler, but uh, may lose some information. And the second one is more complicated and more, co more comprehensive, but need uh, more subtle uh, things like SUSI, uh, non-local theories and yes, things like that. But since we have the exact result of the uh, correlation functions, then everything can be sorted out. So this, in this case, I call it infinite n disordered Wilson Fisher. It's just some theory different from the clean theory. Then next, let's go to the three to four dimensions uh, at n equal to infinite. This is very simple. So um, since we couple the disorder to the singlet operator, so here, and there is a one over n, one over square root of n in front of the coupling. So larger n limit will suppress uh, the disorder effect the system goes back to the free theory. So even though the disorder is relevant, but um, our system is uh, clean, it go, go back to the clean uh, case. So because, because of the larger effect. Now uh, with knowledge of uh, infinite n, it's not enough, so we would like to know more about our physical system, which can only have finite n. So here one can do the epsilon, a double expansion of epsilon and one over n. Um, so, okay, yeah, let's, let me explain these two question marks one by one. So firstly, let's look at the two plus epsilon uh, dimension no system. So in this case, the we can so the the five field would play a role in in the um, one over n correction. So we can write down this more uh, complicated action, um, which includes the kinetic term of sigma, and also the coupling between disorder and the sigma field, and also we um, we bring the terms describing the five fields back into the action. And then we can do the double expansion. So um, from this action, we can compute the disorder averaged correlation function and uh, then do the renormalization. I will not go to detail about it. So finally, <laughs> I will get the beta function for the disorder strength, W square. It has this form. Okay, okay. Okay, so there, are, besides this clean uh, fixed point, there is another fixed point at finite disorder strength. Uh, this is a non-trivial disorder uh, fixed point. We can compute anomalous dimensions of the phi field, sigma field, and also the dynamic exponent at this, at this uh, fixed point. So according to the beta function, we can draw the RG flow diagram in this case at d equal to two plus epsilon. It, it, sh uh, it shows, uh, starting from the clean fixed point, Wilson Fisher fixed point, uh, one can expect the RG flow towards some disordered fixed point at finite disorder strength. 
And then we, uh, we can look at, um, let me see. Uh, yes, oh, so this, this result is to the linear order of epsilon and one over n. So at d equal to four minus epsilon, we can do the same thing. We can write down its action. So now the coupling uh, would, have, would affect the behavior of the system. We can also compute the collision function, disorder average it, and then uh, do the renormalization on that uh, correlation function. And finally get the beta function of W square. But notice in this case, one thing I would like to emphasize is that the replica method doesn't work in this case because the replicated action doesn't have lower bound. So what we one can do is to use a more traditional way to compute the correlation function at particular disorder realization and then do the disorder average order by order. So since the disorder has Gaussian distribution, so it's fine to uh, integrate them over order by order. So similarly, at the order of epsilon and one over n, we find the beta function uh, of the disorder strengths, W square. Uh, it shows there are two fixed points. The one is clean one, and the other one locates at minus four pi squared epsilon. So notice when epsilon is positive, below four dimension, when the disorder is uh, relevant, the, this fixed point is not physical. So, but, but when epsilon is negative above four dimension, we find a physical disorder fixed point. In this, um, so above four, since it's at four, above four dimension, no system, um, the disorder fixed point is repulsive. Nevertheless, we can compute some enormous dimension and uh, dynamic exponent at this fixed point. So this beta function give us two RG flow diagram. Below four dimensions, we can see the disorder drives the system away from the clean fixed point. But um, whether it will reach some IR fixed point, we don't know. Our perturbative method cannot reach to the strong disorder regime. But it's likely that this uh, disorder fixed point we found at two plus epsilon uh, dimensions would exist uh, here as well, but at rather larger disorder strength. And above four dimensions, uh, if we perturb the system by a small, very small uh, disorder, then the system will flow back to the Gaussian fixed point. Mm. But, but once the disorder strength is larger than uh, some value in the UV, then it will flow away. So this uh, somehow make, makes sense because we can imagine for any clean system is if we put large enough disorder, the IR, in the IR limit, the system would behave differently like as compared to the clean system. So, so far I've already replaced all the question marks with uh, some of, with my results. And uh, so, let me conclude. Okay, so in, in this work, what I, I've done is uh, in this figure already. So I discussed two diff uh, four different cases. Uh, two of them are at infinite n and two of them are at finite n. So infinite n case, I guess it's only for pure theoretical interest because the theory, uh, th there are interesting ways to understand the system. So when D, uh, the space dimension between two and three dimensions, the disordered Wilson Fisher fixed point can be understood in two ways. Uh, one is simpler, one is more complicated. And, but um, the exact results are the same. So the, uh, system, the behavior of a system is already obtained. At finite end, um, so which is more physical relevant, especially at two and three dimensions. And so it is suggested that when D is equal to two, um, the large N um, result is a well approximate to the small N behavior. So we can directly plug in the N equal to two to our large N result and get those enormous dimension and dynamic exponent. So, 
the this dynamic exponent is actually very close to the previous uh, study, uh, especially by the quantum Monte Carlo study on the two-dimensional uh, system, uh, two-dimensional boss Hubbard model with uh, hopping uh, disorder. Yes. But for d equal to three, uh, we hope that it is it can also well approximate to small n behavior and but but so far there's no numerical uh, result. It's much harder than the d equal to two case. So if uh, if this is true and also the epsilon expansion holds for epsilon equal to one, then we can get those. Uh, enormous dimension dynamic exponent and hope there's some numerical more precise numerical result in the future and uh, can compare with this theoretical study uh thanks i'm gonna stop here all right so the talk is open to questions now so we can joseph sorry. yeah no i just wanted to mention yeah very interesting talk. okay yeah so, so i think there's two studies so there's this old one, but then there's there's two Monte Carlo studies in like 2015, 2016. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh -huh. it's a group of Thomas Voita and collaborators where they did they, they look at this uh superfluid to Mont last transition. Mm -hmm. So in 2D and then in 3D also. I see. Oh, in 3D. Yeah, uh, there is one. Did they get any like yeah, they have exponents. exponents? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember. I think I the see. Z was like 1.8 or something. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. It's bigger than the Z in D equals two. I see. I see. And the D equals two Z is quite close to. I think it's like one. Right. Five. So do you get this in D equals two? Do you get this the same results as the Goldman for the D equals two exponents? Yeah. Is it the same exponents as the Goldman, Goldman yes, study? Yes, okay. So yes. then it agrees to the yes. study. Yes. Yeah. The theoretical study agrees. To yeah. Each yeah. Other. <laughs> right. <laughs> With numerics, it's harder. Yeah. 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 But yeah. yeah, that's right. But yeah, there is a D equals three study. The quantum of I see. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I can I should show know you that. the references. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, we, do you want to ask a question or? Do, yeah. Is there a mic there or? If not, no, 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 no. It's, it's on Zoom. They don't hear otherwise. Yeah. I was wondering uh, about the uh, nature of the desired Wilson uh, Wilson Fisher fixed point that you have found the the, the nature of it. So, can you compute thermodynamic um, uh, thermodynamic observables? Uh, which could be of relevance to some some mean, uh, experimental uh, findings uh -huh. around this um, perhaps. susceptibility, um, heat capacity. You uh, mean the one over n? Result? Yeah, after uh -huh. after taking the limit uh, relevant n equal to two limit, can can uh -huh. there be uh, estimation for thermodynamic? Yes, yeah, yeah. for some critical exponent, those things. And are there uh, experiments? Uh, on related compounds that you think this applies to? Uh, right. Yeah, there are experiments, but I'm not sure if they like. Yeah, I don't remember any like uh, precise value which I can compare with. Yeah, but indeed there are some experiments uh, in two D on some thin films. Yeah, I should. Yeah, I should check that. I see. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so at the beginning, you kind of you know mentioned briefly previous work on chemical potential disorder, and then this is sort of math disorder. Can you say a little bit about you know is that all there is? Are there other types of disorder that you would expect to be qualitatively different? And maybe also why, like you know, is there a basic way to understand why those two kinds of disorder would give different? I see. Um... So for chemical potential, so so far, I guess I think for the hopping, random hopping, mm -hmm. uh, has similar uh, phase diagram as the random chemical potential. It's just uh, at the particle hole, at the half filling, uh, the the phase would be different from away from half filling. Mm -hmm. So at half filling, there's some constraint that yeah. to make the system or yeah. malt glass uh, with a gap. And but away from the uh, half filling, its gap is some, something like that. It has compressibility. So, you, so in other words, you don't think this is a like, you don't think there's kind of qualitatively different mm -hmm. types of disorder for this. System. Yeah, 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 yeah. So here I only study the um, half filling. Yes, where the that uh, dynamic exponent is one, 
in the clean system. Otherwise, I need to study z equal to two. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would change okay. the okay. physics a so lot. So that's where the difference is yes. when you come off the tip of the mod. Right, right, right. Exactly. Yes. So your disorder must be exactly part of the symmetry, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the way you float it, the flow of mass. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Mass. Yes. So for the quantum Monte Carlo, do they get all three exponents in the simulations? I don't think they get the other critical exponents. So they, they, only, they get only get Z? Z. Okay. Yes. Yes. And so that's quite close to what they find, yes. which is nice, because I mean, it's non trivial yeah, exponent. So 2D is it's far from one, so <laughs> <laughs> you never know, but here it works. Um, but presumably, they could also get like uh, gamma phi, right? I mean, like order parameter correlations, isn't that something that they often measure in the, at least in the clean context? So is there a reason why there's no- I guess the result is not very good. Like mm. the, like maybe system size is not large enough and uh, it's not very clear. But there's no, there's no sign problem, right? Because no. they're preserving the particle hole symmetry. Yeah. So then- <laughs> well, it's sort of zoom people, but always they just hear a faint. Echo. Yeah, so it's, it's very surprising. I thought these are these are sort of world line type Monte Carlo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they are they are rather uh -huh. So the gamma five would be basically measuring the the, the boson boson correlator. Uh huh. Boson -boson right, 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 right. Yeah. And so that's that you say is hard. Yeah. Well, it's done. It's been I done. I don't remember the. My oh, it's negative. Yeah, uh -huh, so, what are the yeah. more recent studies? Do you know all dimensions? Yes. Those so two thousand. Yeah. More recent. More recent. White balance. Well, when which so, year it is? Two thousand sixteen. Oh. Not a robust and the uh, white balance. Ah. And also, the, I uh, the, the other prediction for new is the correlation. Uh huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so it's related to theta sigma. Right? Sorry. Uh, yeah, a gamma, gamma sigma, yeah. Oh, yeah, so what's the relation between uh, nu inverse and mm. gamma, gamma sigma? Uh, nu is 1 over d plus 1 minus delta, I guess. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, one would have to calculate. Yeah, they find they have a value of nu as mm -hmm. well, they, they quote. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I should check that paper. Yeah, yeah. maybe I only read oh, rather old papers. Mm. <laughs> so the, the gamma sigma will be density-density correlation function? Right? Uh, gamma sigma related to the exponent of correlation lens. The, the sigma with the so yeah. Oh, the density density yeah. correlation function. Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. But you just get it from new, right? So uh, new. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, many operators, I guess, would have this correlation length, density density also. We have that also. If there's a single correlation length, then everything should, should show it. Right? But numerically, is it, is it, is it well said? I'm sorry. So I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have to grow. I have to get bigger somehow. Is it, so, but numerically, is there a big discussion about those exponents? I have no idea. I mean, is, or is it, or they're basically a couple of simulations and they all agree and everything's fine? Or are these exponents all over the place? Like in fermions, for example. So I guess for two D, I think there there are agreements okay. about it. Yeah, but for three D, yeah, maybe like to my knowledge, there's not too much too many works on it. Yeah. Just maybe a quick question. So the first transition between because now you look at the transition between the Bose the Bose glass and the superfluid. Right. And the other transition between the the oh the mod insulating the mod insulating the or the glass. yeah is that's first order or that's a crossover what is that oh I trend? don't know that I don't I don't know yeah yeah no hmm. there's also less people discuss that but that's from theoretical studies this phase diagram that you yeah showed. theoretical yeah. being filled in from the mod glass to the to the mod insulator or to the well maybe you can show it for everyone just uh, it's in your first slide yeah. Yeah, this one. Right. So from the moth insulator to the Bose glass, because now she's looking at the Bose glass to superfluid. Yeah. But I was just curious of what happens at this other transition. Is it first order or crossovers? Yeah. Yeah, actually, I don't know the nature of it, but it's, it's something like open up a gap. Some, yeah. But isn't the Bose glass also gapped? Uh, no, I no, no, no. no. It's not? It has, yeah. It's compressible. Finite compressibility. Even yeah. 
with the disorder that's particle hole symmetric. No, no, oh, the mod oh, class is the particle symmetric one. That's yeah, mod, mod class is that. Yeah. That's the yeah. incompressible. It's incompressible. Yeah. So then, but exactly. So mod inside your phrase is incompressible. Bose glass is incompressible. Bose, you know, Bose glass is compressible. There's a mod glass that's just along the red line. Yeah. Between n and a set, exactly at that. Value. Okay, so it's not, it's not labeled. It's, it's not labeled. I see, yeah. I see, I see, I see. Any more questions on Zoom? No? Okay. Well, let's thank Han again for a very nice talk. <laughs>